So at Erie today, we are in fact bringing magic to bear. The multi-parent advanced generation intercross approach, which seeks to recombine the genetic makeup of many different highly successful uh, varieties and allow them to basically reshuffle the deck to see if there are new combinations of genes that were previously unrealized or even unimagined, if you would, uh, that can help us address some very serious and complex problems facing us. So this research is, in fact, very innovative. It's high risk, but in the event that it pays off, the dividends will be enormous. Rice production systems are increasingly affected and continually threatened by the changing climate. Extreme and erratic weather patterns have made some rice production areas more and more unfavorable, putting pressure on rice scientists to breed varieties that are resistant against these conditions. Doing nothing now places food security at severe risk in the coming decades. Securing the rice supply in the future is crucial, especially for the poor who rely on it as a daily staple. Many decades ago, rice varieties bred at the International Rice Research Institute, or ERI, have saved the world from famine. When the first ERI bred variety, called IR8, or Miracle Rice, was released, yield was the priority. Over the years, ERI went on to develop rice varieties that resisted pests and disease and even more varieties that held up against drought, flood, and saline soil. To date, Erie has released about a thousand improved rice varieties in several countries. About 50 years after Miracle Rice, the world's farms once again face a set of interrelated challenges threatening food production. Most varieties that are tolerant of flood, drought, or salinity can only hold up to the stress it was bred against. Now, imagine a rice plant possessing a suite of traits that enables it to grow and survive under inhospitable conditions against multiple stresses. Too good to be true? At Erie, an audacious team of scientists have embarked on an elaborate project to develop multiple stress-proof rice. Their game plan they call it MAGIC. MAGIC stands for Multi-Parent Advanced Generation Intercross. To do MAGIC, the project team selected eight cultivars each as founder lines for Indica and Japonica. These cultivars are modern varieties from around the world known to be adapted to a range of biotic and abiotic stresses, are high-yielding and have good grain quality. Progenies of these founder lines are used to build genetic maps. These maps, or DNA sequences, help scientists identify genes whose locations are known and which are located near a gene of interest. Because magic lines are inbred, they represent a permanent resource for breeding and genetic studies that can be used by the rice community in perpetuity. Put simply, these are the steps involved in magic. The crossing of founder lines intercrossing of 28 two-way recombinants, intercrossing of 70 four-way recombinants, and selfing of 60 plants per eight-way cross from 35 recombinants. Progeny are maintained through the single seed descent method. To simplify how to create the magic population, we have a deck of cards and each of these group of cards are representing the, the eight varieties A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. These are the founder lines. And this is, we will be doing a systematic crossing of the different parents to create the magic indica population. So we have to cross first A and B to create A, B, C and B to create C, D, E and F create EF cross GH and we have the eight combinations four combinations and you have to mix again cross ABCD to make ABCD combination EF and GH to create the EF GH cross and now the final combination of the two to create the ABCD EF 
CH indica population. So this is the first population we created, the indica magic, and we have to do two more shuffling, grinding, to all the more recombine the different traits together to create the magic indica plus. So if we have the magic indica here, and the same thing as we create the magic japonica, we have to combine both to create the magic global. It's the combination of the magic indica and the magic japonica cross. So this is the magic global. With this combination, we were able to create four population for magic, magic indica, magic japonica, magic plus, and magic global. With this four population, this will, this will become a permanent mapping population of the trait of interest you want from drought, salinity, submergence, all the disease resistance, high yield, grain quality, and other traits of interest. So this is a best way to recombine different traits and create a genotype that is appropriate for the, for the environment you want to, to do. You could combine salinity and submergence, you could combine disease resistance and abiotic stress resistance, high yield, and grain quality with this magic population. So these, uh, we, on average, we have uh, about over a thousand lines per population. And that become a, what I like to call these uh, compact genetic resources. So 1,000 uh, lines per magic population represent a compact uh, um, combination of multiple uh, traits. Because you take eight parents, shovel them together, they still stay, stay in there, right? So that 1,000, let's say 1,000 line, carry a lot of traits. So uh, any uh, geneticists or breeders want to do is to take maybe a subset of that. Then you already have a lot of genetic variation in that. So that's the beauty of the magic. In 2011, the team developed an Indica Magic population, or a set of breeding lines that were tested in the Philippine provinces of Iloilo, Bukidnon, and Laguna, and in three locations in Africa in the first cropping season of 2012. Field testing in eight locations around Asia and two locations in Africa have also started. The Indica Magic population and its counterpart Japonica Magic population were further crossed to expand genetic diversity and improve adaptation to various cropping conditions across the world. The Indica and Japonica cross resulted in what we call the Magic Global Population. I see uh impact happening at several levels. Uh, at the spatial level, uh, I think the project will help uh, varietal uh, improvement efforts in Asia, in Africa, in Latin America, and even in temperate uh, rice growing countries because the materials we used in developing magic uh, populations were all coming from these uh, regions. You can even uh, say that impact is going to happen uh, at the academy academic level. Uh, right now we have several dozen, uh, uh, more than a dozen students uh, working on different aspects uh, of the magic populations, uh, identifying uh, new uh, QTLs and, uh, and basically uh, uh, studying the genetics of uh, different traits that are uh, captured by these different uh, uh, populations we have developed. And then uh, on a bigger scale at the systems level, uh, one can uh, say that uh, impact is uh, going uh, to be uh, happening uh, in terms of the increasing uh, diversity on farm. Uh, and that's because uh, with uh, the different uh, combinations of genes that we have uh, recombined, uh, you have basically uh, suites uh, of uh, or cassettes of uh, traits uh, uh, in different combinations and that's going to be very good uh, for farmers. I think uh, breeders or the young breeders are the ones who will benefit most from the uh, magic population. These are the scientists behind the magic project at Erie. With this magic project we were able to create a permanent mapping population to, to map 
the trait of interest from the different uh, scientists who are studying rice genetics. At the same time, we were, we, we were able to create new combinations of rice that could adapt to the new, new environment because of climate change. And with this one, this is the first big project that we created to develop a multi-parent advanced generation intercross that will serve the farmer's need, have a high impact. At the same time, it is a platform where the different scientists, we could work together to exploit this new diversity to help the farmers in the future.